It's now time for The Sit Down with Don Tony. The Sit Down, where Don Tony talks one on one with his followers. What are you looking at? About the world of pro wrestling, pop culture, and so much more. The Sit Down with Don Tony. And now, your host, Don Tony. All right, everybody. How you doing, everybody? It is Sunday night. The sit down is here. Yours truly. Still, uh, wow, that extra hour of sleep that we lost. Oh boy, daylight savings time was yesterday, and uh, yeah, I got to make up for that hour tonight. Still not used to it, but it's all good. It's all good. Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, We're going to get right into live chat. Maybe we'll take some calls as well, depending on the request. The request line out there. Uh, We do have some very sad news to report. Um, And I tell you, you've heard me say this over the years, uh, over and over and over again. Um, And every time I say it, You know, I'm always met with a question, DT, why do you always say a broken bone could be life-threatening? I tell you, when it comes to breaking hips, you know, there's just so many factors involved. And, you know, when you get older, it's not just the bones being more fragile, but I have heard crazy shit go down where somebody falls, breaks a hip, breaks a leg, the next thing you know, they're gone. Now, thank God right now, we do not have to report a death in the world of pro wrestling. But man, you know, you just want to tell it like it is. Pray for a miracle. Pray for a miracle because a miracle is needed in this case. For those that aren't aware, Scott Hall, Uh, is in critical condition in a Georgia hospital right now. Uh, He is on life support, and this is the result of him having three heart attacks yesterday. Um, Not a whole lot has been made public. You know, some local networks in the Georgia area were the ones that actually broke this. I know the torch had picked it up a little bit later on. Um, It appears that he developed a blood clot. And uh, that's one of the things when you're in the hospital, you know, if you've ever been in the hospital for an extended stay, sometimes they put these things around your legs and it gets tight and it loosens up and it gets tight again. You know, that's all about circulation. When you get older, and that circulation becomes a problem, you know, you are at higher risk of something to go down. And look, I am not, what I'm about to show you, minutes worth of audio, I am not trying to play the I told you so thing. But for everyone out there, when you hear someone older breaking a hip, breaking a leg, you know, even if they're home resting comfortable, that is still a very, very serious situation to go through. This clip that I'm going to share with you right now was only 10 days ago. I did hear, Kevin, about Scott Hall falling and breaking his hip. I'm going to get the details. I'll talk about it tomorrow. You know, you bring up his age, 63 years old, and I've said this before. You know, you get older, your bones are very frail. You could fall and die from a stupid little fall. I mean, you know, crazy shit happens. The older you get, you know, the small... That's how quick it can be. Now, when you're on life support, the machine is keeping you alive. That's really what it is. And, um, you know, of course, we don't want to jump the gun, and I'm not going to jump the gun. But being on life support... You know, the only thing, if there's any consolation right now, 
is that he is resting comfortably. He probably has a boatload of pain medication in him for the hip. Obviously, they got to be careful because of the heart. But he is he should not be in pain right now. But still, doesn't take away the fact that uh, one of our favorites in the last 25, 30 years um, is now fallen seriously ill. And, uh, you know, that guy is one tough son of a bitch. And, yes, he battled his demons. No question. We don't need to go there. But still, still, you know, he fought and fought DDP, yoga, physically, mentally, fallen off the wagon many times. He's a human being. You know, everybody makes mistakes. But in recent years, he's been good. He's been good. And that's one thing that everybody should look back on and smile, that despite all of his, you know, past aggressions um, and his faults, you know, he was good the last couple of years, clean for the most part. So my thoughts and prayers are with him, his family, his friends, fellow fans out there. Pray for a miracle. Even if you're not religious, pray for a miracle. You never know. You never know. But, uh, you know, again, life support. Man, you know, if you've ever had a family member go through life support, and I've had a few, um, it's rough, man. It's rough. I, I just finished having a conversation with a friend of mine that, you know, I don't want to get too specific, but I had an aunt pass away about four years ago. And uh, you might remember, you actually may remember, about four or five years ago, I was talking about an aunt that I was always close with, but she started really going off the rails emotionally. And, you know, we I would be talking to her like, you know, uh, oh, how's everything going? And then she would start talking about like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to see my mom later. My mom's been dead for 35 years. You know, she would just say things that didn't make sense. And she ended up getting ill in a hospital, in a coma on life support. And my uh, relatives, you know, his do her daughter had to make the decision, keep her on life support or take her off life support. And um, at first they kept her on life support, but then a whole bunch of, you know, her kids got together and said, look, you know, are we keeping her around for us or for her benefit? And they made the decision to take her off life support. And without getting too technical about it, and I didn't even know about this until a few months ago, uh, Apparently when they took her off life support, she woke up. She woke up. She got up, got up out of bed, didn't get out of bed, but got up like this, curled up, and she looked at everybody, and then like 30 seconds or a minute later, she was gone. But as ridiculous as that may sound, I have family members to, to this day think, that if they didn't pull the plug, maybe she would have gotten out of it. You know, you just don't know. You just don't know. I had to have this conversation with my parents last year when my father went in for a simple stress test, and the next thing you know, he's got triple bypass and the widowmaker. My father didn't, they didn't detect that my father would have been gone three months later. My mom, a couple of years ago, you know, you all know the deal. She flatlined twice, you know, technically three. And, you know, we had this conversation last year, like, you know, if, if either one of my parents were ever put on life support, my mom and my dad said, pull the fucking plug. Pull the plug. I don't want to suffer. That's rough, man. When You have to think about that. I hope I'm never in that situation. But when you're on life support, you know, Pray for a miracle. So, all right, I didn't want to 
open the show on such a down note, but it obviously is a very serious thing going on right now. And, uh, you know, I don't know what is going to transpire going forward. Tomorrow, hopefully we have a positive update. But, man, life support is no joke. No joke. So, um, AS7607, she says that she saw that Scott's son, Cody, posted a quick message on his Instagram thanking everybody for the love, support, and the prayers. Yeah, you know, you think about it, and I'm not trying to assume, but when you just think about family, he may have to, he may end up being the one that has to make the decision. I don't wish that on anybody, seriously. I I don't ever want that put on me, man. Yeah, let do, let's talk about something a little positive. You know, it's up to you guys. Whatever's on your mind. I'm here for the next hour-ish. We'll go about an hour. You know, whatever's on your mind and you want to chat about, that's what I'm here for. I do want to let everyone know that, no, Sami Zayn did not call me back. Sami Zayn did not send me a text message. Uh, he did show this picture earlier. And for those, my audio-only friends out there, as of earlier today, he has gotten 20,100 and 52 text messages, and 369 missed calls. I think we are responsible for about four of those mixed call, missed calls. But um, that was funny yesterday. That was funny yesterday. Eddie K, what's up, my brother? Yeah, for the first time in three weeks, no Don Tony sign at Raw. You know, for those that are not aware, uh, you know him on social media, on Twitter, as Zylot Dean. So, Eddie, I thank you again for the support. You know, it is so much appreciated. It uh, really puts a smile on my face, and everyone's support out there puts a smile on my face. So, yeah, um, Eddie K says he FaceTime with Sammy on Friday for about 40 seconds. Yeah, I have uh, one of my friends, you know, extended family member of the show, Mikey that had a conversation with him, and he supposedly capped the audio, so he's uh, supposed to send it to me. You know, if he does, I'll share it with everybody tomorrow. But that's good. You know, look, again, you know, those asking, is that really Sammy's phone? I, you know, I, I answered you like this. You have a phone. You probably have the same number for a very, 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 very long time. Um, even if it's WrestleMania, even if it's for the benefit of a storyline, I don't think Sami Zayn is going to take a number that he has had for a very long time, allow it to be doxxed, where he has probably people he grew up with, family members and others that have that number. Ultimately, that number is going to be disconnected. In my opinion, it's a burner phone. You know, I have a burner phone. I mean, I don't use it. The power's been off for the longest time. But I have a burner phone for my office because I made the mistake of always, you can't really see it because the cable is short. I got to get a longer cable for the phone. But um, I used to give out my cell phone number to a lot of customers. And some people, you know, I think un don't understand what time is. And, uh, you know, calling me at 7 a.m., which may not sound too early, but for me, that's early or calling me on a Sunday night for bullshit reasons, or if I don't answer, you keep calling over and over and over and over again. I'm like, come on, this is my fucking personal phone. If you had an accident, something very, very serious, fine. But you call me six times on a Sunday night, and I finally answer the phone, and the person's like, hey, could you let me know when my payment is due? Fuck you. Seriously. Leave me alone. So I got a burner phone. And I gave everybody that number, and the power's been off for a couple of weeks now. So, did you all hear about um, what's his face, Tom Brady, unretiring? So many of you called that a mile away. We were joking, saying he was going to pull a Mark Henry. Yeah, you know what? That's a good thing. In the end, having Tom Brady in football for another year, that's a good thing. May not be a good thing for. Maybe a favorite team of yours that might have to go against him, but that's a good thing. You know, he's a lifelong football guy. 
I truly believe that he retired and had no intentions on returning. But it's just like pro wrestling. You know, at this age, of course, you don't want to see Hogan or Flair or Vince or others. You know, Vince is a little different. But for some wrestlers, you don't want to see them in their 70s in the ring. But you understand that even when wrestlers retire, look at Terry Funk, my favorite wrestler of all time, Terry Funk. The man was retiring in his mid-50s. I think he was going to retire at 53, 53, I think he was retiring. And um, he retired. He had the match with Brett. You know, it wasn't that wasn't officially his last match, but that was supposed to be his retirement event tribute to the Funker. And then, sure enough, he continued, 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 retired again, continued, continued. New Jack did that a few times. Um, you know, it's in your blood, and you're doing it all your life. You know, it's very easy for a couple of months, all right, I'll pack it in, and then you just get that itch, that urge. You could still do it. You could still, maybe not what you could do 10 years, but you could still do it enough where the fans will love it. So, you know, you see people wanting to come back. I think that's what happened with Tom Brady. I really believe that he legit retired. I don't think it was a publicity stunt. And I think after a couple of months, he's like, why am I wasting this year? I could still play. I want to play. It's a good thing. Gary Richards, I agree with you. Chris Jericho will be back in WWE. I don't know if it'll be before the end of 2022, but he is definitely, he is definitely going back to WWE. You know, I hope, I hope in the end, AEW wrestlers, uh, excuse me, AEW wrestling fans, hardcore fans, I hope they realize at the end of the day that AEW is just a business for a majority of the wrestlers that are there. That if they can get a better offer with another promotion, even if it is WWE, they're going to take it. You would take it. I would take it. And anybody out there that says that they wouldn't are just looking for that social media, you know, buzz. Uh, Jericho's going to go back. WWE makes crazy offers down the line to Sammy or Darby and others. They'll go back. Well, they weren't there in the first place. They'll go to WWE. It's a business. It's a business. I remember when Dixie Carter, you know, was really, really, you know, getting deep into TNA. And this perception that it was one extended family there. And that none of the wrestlers, the hardcore that bled TNA, they would never go to the competitor. And when their contracts were up, they just picked up and left. It's just business. Dixie Carter truly thought that some wrestlers were going to do freebies for her. Look, I know the contract's expired, but you know, could you stay a few more weeks? Talk to my agent. You know, it's nothing personal. But a lot of wrestling fans are going to take this personal. They're going to call a lot of wrestlers traitors. If Wardlow picks up and leaves down the line, if Jericho leaves, if any of the young stars of tomorrow leave, they're going to be called traitors. They're going to be called everything in the book. But again, most of the people that do that on social media, they don't even pump gas for a living. They don't even pump gas for a living. So they don't understand that at the end of the day, you do what's best for yourself and for your family. Not so you, so everybody on social media gives you hugs and kisses. Oh, good. You, 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 you declined the temptation of going to the evil WWE. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously. We would call that loony. Do I think Kenny Omega will go to WWE. That's from Gruss. Yeah, it's that's an interesting one, man. That is an interesting one. Um, you know why I say yes more now than I did two years ago? Because of Kenny Omega's run last year as champion. I never said it to trigger anybody that is a AEW fan. 
But every time I said it, I used to trigger a lot of people out there. And um, I would say, you know, Kenny Omega has turned into a sports entertainer. AJ Styles turned into a sports entertainer who also puts in incredible matches. A lot of wrestlers, Ricochet, Kevin Owens, others, they're sports entertainers. Kenny Omega in 2021 turned into a sports entertainer. The way he tweaked his look, the way that he would have Cutler always come out there and interfere and the young bucks and it was always some, you know, hokey bullshit going on. He turned into a sports entertainer, period. And guess what? That prolongs his career. That allows him to also do the duties that he does behind the scenes for AEW. So Kenny Omega, you know, for anybody that thinks that he would never ever dare go because that's just not Kenny Omega, oh boy, if he ever goes there. I mean, the shock that people, you know, yeah, I definitely, let me put it this way. The only person that knows if Kenny Omega's could ever go to WWE is Kenny Omega. But I will tell you, my gut feeling is a lot more yes now than it was two years ago. Crazy Shem, what's up? Steph, what's the minimum pay for Ring of Honor wrestlers? I don't know the exact number. I mean, you know, a lot of these wrestlers, as far as their contract right now, it is so thin, it is so paper thin, and it's more focused around the champions than anything else. And, um, you know, understand something. Just some people need to realize. Those contracts are between Sinclair and the wrestler. It's not between Tony Khan and the wrestler. So that's why, like I say, you know, it's very easy online for people to say, oh, Ring of Honor, you know, they they could go back to shows. You know, they got the one next month and they could go in May. Why, why you know, they could start picking up and go. No, no. All the contracts have to be renegotiated when WCW went out of business. When WCW folded and World Wrestling Entertainment purchased, you know, WCW, the contracts were still with AOL Time Warner. And those wrestlers would have to make a choice. Either uh, break the AOL Time Warner contract, what was left, and make it null and void so they could sign with WWE, or they would just sit at home and collect a paycheck. You look at, you know, because I was friends with Bam Bam Bigelow, not close friends, but friends enough that he wanted me to sell all his possessions. You know, he had the AOL Time Warner contract and he got paid about 200 grand. And, you know, when the contract was up, he could have relinquished, voided out that contract sooner and work for other promotions. But why would you? You look at Hall, Nash, Hogan, Goldberg, others, a lot of these wrestlers, they're like, hey, I'm getting paid from AOL Time Warner and there's no WCW. You know, I'll just keep collecting a paycheck. That's why the invasion storyline was missing so many people. So again, when you see people online talking about Ring of Honor and coming back quick and this and that, you know, they truly, and I'm not saying this to be critical because not everybody is to, again, you're not required to know CM Punk's Ring of Honor history you know, you're not required to also know how corporations and contracts are handled. But these contracts are not transferred over to Tony Khan. And Tony Khan is like, oh, let me see what I have here. No, they would have to be renegotiated. But I will say this, the difference between AOL Time Warner and Sinclair is that Sinclair's contracts were pretty much thin. You know, there's not much there. I mean, because look, Ring of Honor, before all of this, has been pretty much, you know, on hiatus. They're not doing much at all. So the contracts are very, very thin as it is. If Tony Khan renegotiates with anybody that has a Ring of Honor contract with Sinclair, I guarantee you Tony's offer is going to be better. 
I can't see anybody under Sinclair saying, you know what, Tony? No, I'd rather just live out the Sinclair deal. I mean, how much do you think they get? A couple of hundred bucks? You know, it's great money when you don't have to do anything. But no, that's the difference. AOL, Time Warner, there were millions and millions and millions of dollars of contracts involved. And these wrestlers just like, fuck yeah, I'll just sit at home and do nothing, you know, and I'll just collect money. Any of us would do that. Matt, thank you very much, my friend. And yes, you know, I, I, I will shout out some of our friends, chat, super chat, email will go across the gamut. But since he has this on the screen, I'll answer it. Why is AEW not allowing the Briscoes to go there? What exactly happened? Okay, there actually is a legit reason behind this. There are reports going around that, I think it was Jay Briscoe. I, I don't want to get it wrong, but I think it was Jay Briscoe. Uh, about, before I say it, let me preface it this way. Remember what happened with Brian Kendrick? Brian Kendrick, audio, video came up of stuff that he said like 10, 15 years ago, whatever it was, and AEW pulled his debut. Remember that? You really, at the end of the day, cannot blame AEW for pulling Brian Kendrick's debut because there would have been controversy surrounding it and it would have been nonstop. But the problem is when you start that trend, you know, you have to stick to it. You can't be uh, picking and choosing. That's why with Sammy Guevara, look, in hindsight, what he said about Sasha Banks, listen, everybody, growing up from my teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, I mean, we've all sexually fantasized about people. I can honestly say without a shadow of a doubt, I never, ever looked at any female that I may have fantasized, even going back to my teens, said, yeah, I would love to rape her. I, mean, I didn't come up with something like that. Seriously, not even in a joke. Even with a joke. I mean, why even go to that extent? I mean, if you really think about it, you know, I mean, Many times going to my teens, oh, my God, I'd love to bang her. Oh, God, what I would do to her. Why would you say that you would do something violently, violently forced? That's just weird. But AEW had to do something about it. Now, yes, there's a little bit of controversy with Darby. There's a little controversy with Justin Roberts. There's a little controversy with some others. But, you know, unfortunately, it's not strong enough, you know, that they would make it some type of disciplinary action on it. But in the case of the Briscoes, I think it was Jay Briscoe. Uh, from what I understand, he is not a supporter of gay marriage. Maybe he is now. But about nine years ago, apparently he made a couple of comments publicly, and I think one is in the form of a tweet where, you know, he said something really, really terrible against gay marriage. I don't have the tweet in front of me. I mean, I could pull it up and read it to you. It would take me literally a second. But he basically said something like, you know, actually, you know what? I don't want to put words in his mouth. It'll literally take me two seconds, because all I got to do is type in Jay Briscoe, AEW, gay marriage, and I'm sure it'll pop right up. Okay. Let's see. Well, this tweet is from, this is from, okay. Let's see. Hopefully this is not a block. Okay. Back in 2013, here is Jay Briscoe's comments. Jay Briscoe said, in 2013, the Delaware Senate passed a bill yesterday that allows same-sex couples to get married. If that makes you happy, then congratulations. Try and teach my kids that there's nothing wrong with that, and I'll fucking shoot you. Now, I think he has apologized 
to those remarks. And look, you know, I don't want to get into the topic of gay marriage here. I have relatives who are married that are gay. To me, you know, whatever floats your boat, you, you're, whatever, I'm fine with it. Um, what I don't, what I don't think some people want is to have something forced on their children. I don't have any children. So I can't imagine that. And I'm not justifying what Jay Briscoe said. I think the problem is when Jay Briscoe says, I'll fucking shoot you, you know, that's almost like the Sammy Guevara, you know, oh my God, I want to rape her. You know, you go to that, you know, whacked out extent. That apparently is the reason why they are not going to AEW. Um, look, you know, nobody, I think, expects Jay Briscoe to go out there and start talking serious in a little video blog or something that says, look, you know, those were my views in 2013. I don't want anybody to teach my kid one way or the other. It's not about gay marriage, but it's about people forcing their agenda or their views onto others. You know, you should have the freedom to pick and choose what you want, blah, 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 blah. You know, I don't think anybody expects him to do that. But, you know, I also feel that nine years is an awfully long time, and if he has changed his views about it, you know, I don't think you should hold it against the person, you know, forever. Uh, I The problem is I don't know what his views are in 2022. And I'm not saying that he did this, but a lot of people apologize simply because of the reaction that they received. I truthfully believe Jay Briscoe would have had a lot of people say like, yeah, stand up for yourself. He wouldn't have apologized. Even if some people got offended, he wouldn't apologized. So that is the rumor going around as to why they're not in AEW. So Bob the Builder, will CM Punk ever go back to WWE? He doesn't think so. Never say never. Never say never. Um, you know, I don't blame CM Punk for what happened when he left. You know, it's not just what happened with the doctor and his health issues and the suit and the fighting back and forth. You know, getting fired on your wedding day, didn't that what happened to him? I'm sure there's a lot of bitterness. But I think, you know, as you get older, you know, things change, time changes. And if CM Punk was offered an insane amount of money, no reason why you wouldn't think, hey, maybe he would. Maybe he would do it for the sake of, you know, his wife, his future. If they have children, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Again, the as I said with Kenny Omega, the only person that truly knows that is CM Punk or AJ. But, yeah, I don't see why not. Business is business. This is a business, everyone. Of course you want to be happy. That's probably just as important. You want to be happy in what you do. But it is a business. You know, and at the end of the day, if CM Punk could... Look, he went on Fox, the on Fox, you know, doing a show that was a WWE show. Sure, he wasn't paid by WWE, but he was paid by Fox. But if he despised WWE that much... Anybody that offer him a deal that, you know, would lead him to, you know, work with his former employer, you know, I would turn around and say, go fuck yourself. Hell no. Anything is possible, man. Anything is possible. And will there ever be another Austin Rock? Who knows, man? Who knows? Jay Cutter. Welcome, Jay Cutter. Much love. Um, We don't know. We don't know. I mean, you know, the thing is with Austin, you know, he was already a star in WCW. Nobody expect him to be a mega freaking star. You know, I always said this about Triple H. I remember Hunter Hearst Helmsley in 1995. Anybody that makes the claim that in 1995 people thought this is a future mega star, believe me, send me whatever you were smoking. Nobody was saying that at that time. It just 
develops and morphs. I mean, you see the radical change to Austin. You see the radical change from Rocky Mayavia to The Rock. Letting him, you know, if it wasn't for the Attitude Era, The Rock would have never been The Rock. You look at all the promos and you look at the outlandish shit that he would say. If it wasn't the Attitude Era, he would not be allowed to say half the things. Look at MJF. MJF absolutely needed AEW. If MJF would have came in through WWE instead of AEW, he would not be allowed to say one-fifth of what he says. You know, you think about it. A lot of what he says in AEW, he would not be allowed to say in WWE. So everything is about timing. It's about, you know, the... And it also reflects society. It reflects society. Um, gamers Block... Thank you very much, my friend. Didn't Scorpio Sky lose his WWE contract by saying pretty much what the Briscoe said? I don't know. I think with Scorpio Sky was more of that they didn't see as far as talent at that time. I mean, look, uh, a lot of people at that time didn't see what they see later on with Scorpio Sky. I don't think it was just as cut and dry. I mean, to be honest with you, and I'm not saying this to be a jerk, and I'm sorry for doing this, I actually... Weird, I took allergy medicine tonight, and for some reason, you know, I think it's kind of like doing an adverse effect. Um, WWE is a little more lenient with some of these comments. They really are. I mean, you know, you don't want any of your superstars to say anything stupid, but Brian Kendrick's a perfect example. Brian Kendrick was in 205 Live and NXT for how long? And those comments that he said on High Spots were sitting there we talked about it 10 years ago, 12 years ago, whatever it was. We talked about it back then. It was sitting there. I mean, with WWE, it's more of, look, you know, some people changed. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think that would really be the case. with Maybe at the time it was with Scorpio, but it certainly isn't now. So, um, and Roger Rubio, shout out to you, brother. I did have coffee this morning. He bought. WWE 2K22 and is enjoying it. The first WWE game is he's enjoyed in a long time. Yes, absolutely. Anyone out there wants to create yours truly as a character, by all means, man, I love it. I mean, that's one of the things that was so awesome back in the day was having some send me, like, the creator wrestler. And they're like, oh, you know, I made you, I made so-and-so, I made this, I made that, and I would love that. I still have all the screenshots saved. You know, unfortunately for some other people, you know, they, unless it's perfect, they don't like it. I love it. I don't care if it's if it's a stick figure. You know, as, as long as you don't make me, like, more than, like, 265 pounds, then I'm fine with it. So, Deli Man, absolutely. If anybody wants to make Deli Man, if I could assist in any way, Sure. Absolutely. Yes, and, oh, thank you, Michael. Anyone in the chat, put in a capital letter Q before your question, or you could type in capital letters the word question before your question. I could see it a little bit better because a lot of everyone out there um, are chatting with each other. Sometimes I can't see when there's a question in there. Charlie, I have no allergies. It's just in this room, there's a lot of lights on me. And I don't, any of you out there, if you have like real bright lights on you, you just start getting like, I have bright lights. It's dry in here. I don't want to put the air conditioner on. It's 35 degrees outside. Might even be cold, cold, colder than that. Calling all marks. Before, before marks, Michael Gonzalez. Yeah, I did see the trailer for WWE Evil, and we talked about it uh, Thursday. I think we talked about it on Thursday. Had some fun with that. Um, yeah, I saw the first eight episodes, the trailers, narrated by Cena. You know, a lot of people are like, I want Edge, I want this person. They are going to come out with a second set. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I want to see Ric Flair's reaction. Because Ric Flair has not been all too kind with WWE in recent months. Now I think Ric Flair will kiss WWE's ass for spotlighting him. So, calling all marks. Top doppelganger dream match. His is Scorpio Sky versus Ricochet and the Street Profits versus Private Party. Oh, I don't think 
Scorpio Sky and Ricochet look like each other, other than the fact that they're black and bald or dark skin and bald. That might be a better way to say it. If I have doppelgangers, ga doppelgangers, you know, for me, it's more like John Cena versus um, Darren Young. I mean, that was one back in the day. But you know what? You know who also reminds me a little bit of John Cena? Grayson Waller. He's kind of like a mix between Vanilla Ice and John Cena. Um, hey, I wouldn't mind Grayson Waller beating the shit out of Vanilla Ice. Give me that, man. Give me that. Charlie's asking me, Tammy? No, thanks. Uh, Kevin Milwaukee, are there more doors or wheels in the world? I have no clue. I would think that there's probably more wheels i think there's probably more wheels because if you got two cars that's eight wheels plus two spares you got 10 10 wheels right there you think about everything a shopping cart in your house has four wheels you know you think of other things in your house that have wheels sure you probably have like a hundred wheels in your house and you don't even realize it so gabriella valentine shout out to you shout out to you um, yes, video fan, I'll continue prayers for Scott Hall. I'm actually, I'm going to look and see if there's any updates while we're finishing up the show. Um, you know, it's, I'm looking right now, there's, there is no updates from what we said earlier, but, uh, yeah, I'm just looking right now. Biggie, we talked about it in detail yesterday. You know, really, really wonderful to see the wrestling community come together. I mean, however you feel about Big E or not, you know, you put that aside. You just uh, I will say this, too. I am pleasantly surprised at how many people that said that they think that Pete Dunne's look on SmackDown is better than his look in NXT as far as a character goes, you know, and we put the pictures side by side. I mean, there is no wrong answer there. But as far as like a street brawler, and somebody brought up the example like, hey, Hook wears the wife beater. You know, I mean, he doesn't have the suspenders, but, you know, I me, mean, I'm more concerned how to use Pete Dunne, a.k.a. Butch. If he's used the right way, I, I don't think it's that big. Happy birthday to Gabriella. Tomorrow's her birthday. And she's going to celebrate by not watching Raw. Good deal. Good deal. Believe it or not, I might uh, be playing hooky on Wednesday. My parents are leaving for Florida on Thursday. I have to bird sit. And um, I might have to stay over there and do a few things. So I will let everyone know. But Wednesday there's a possibility that I may not be able to do a Wednesday night show. But the watch party is on for Tuesday. If anyone out there hearing this wants to be part of the watch party, even if you're not a channel member, even if you're not a patron, just email me, dontony at dontony.com, or DM me on Twitter. Those are the two places. Just say, DT, can I get an invite for the watch party? You don't have to pay for anything. There is no catches. All you do is you click on a link. You register your name, and I provide, through playback, I provide the actual video of the wrestling, and we sit there, we watch, we chat, we text, some of us, we talk. You don't have to be on video if you don't want to, but remember, you get to see the wrestling. You go on YouTube, and you look at watch-alongs, you see the host. They're not allowed to show the wrestling. They're not allowed to even let you hear the wrestling. Here... You watch the wrestling, you hear the wrestling. We are allowed. We have been granted permission. No issues at all. So we're doing one Tuesday for NXT, Friday for SmackDown, and Friday for Rampage. Um, can't do Raw, can't do Dynamite. Some good podcasts, and I will plug them next week. They actually have dibs on those, so... Twix is asking me my thoughts on Buff Bagwell living at DDP's house. I give Bagwell a lot of credit because Bagwell has, to say it nicely, bullshitted his way 
throughout the years with some of his indiscretions, some of his issues. I think once his mom passed, I think something inside, you know, gave him a little bit more awareness like, you know, no, I got to clean my shit up. I got to really straighten my ass out. And I think he's doing it in dedication to his mom, her memory. And, uh, you know, it's, that's my hope and what I believe. And uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Diamond Dallas Page is an incredible human being. I mean, he already offered help to Big E, you know, because believe it or not, you know, once he gets the strength back in his C1 especially, um, yoga actually could help quite a bit, can help quite a bit. So Page is a good man. BJ's asking, do I feel that WWE made the right decision to release all the wrestlers that went to AEW since Mr. McCann couldn't do anything with them either? Look, I don't think any wrestler that was let go is dead weight. You know, I don't think it's meant like that. Take note that everybody who got released, I don't think anybody really got offended by that term. It's a publicly traded billion-dollar company that has to answer to investors first and foremost. I've been saying it on this show for years, if not decades. Other shows ignore that aspect. And when Vince McMahon actually spelled it out on the Pat McAfee show, exactly what they do and why they do it, what did all those shows do when they pretty much got owned? Wait, you always said that wasn't the case. They called Vince McMahon liar, a liar. You imagine what would happen if Vince McMahon, in the position that he's in for a billion-dollar company, lies publicly in an interview, which could affect the stock market in some capacity? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But a lot of those wrestlers, if they're not moving the needle, if they're not the reason why a lot of fans are paying money to see them buying merchandise. You know, look, let's be honest, everyone. You know, somebody comes out with a shirt and it happens all the time. You'll get 10,000 people who say, oh my God, I'm going to go pick that up tomorrow. Tomorrow comes maybe one half of 1% actually went ahead and bought the shirt. You know, I think Keith Lee sold, sold more shirts after he was let go from WWE than while he was there. And that's the God honest truth. You know, everybody could say online, oh, limitless, I'm buying this shirt, I'm buying this, I'm buying that, and they buy nothing. You know, I wear the shirts to show support for people. I don't, you know, I brought up Dan Housen last week. I don't wear it so Dan Housen could say, thank you, you know, I can't wait to get my American Alpha, excuse me, Alpha Academy. Yeah, Alpha Academy. You know, you think I'm doing it so Chad Gable could be like, oh, thank you. No, I wear because I like them, I support them. But there's so many people out there, oh, yeah, I rock that person's shirt all the time. Oh, I support them here, I support them there. But, hey, you know, wear it tomorrow on your show. Oh, it's it's in the wash Oh, okay. Well, wash it. Oh, the power's out. Oh, well, there's wool light. Wash it in the sink. Oh, we got no water. Get the fuck out of here. And you don't have to buy a shirt to support someone, but they got rid of all the wrestlers that were f doing nothing. Paperweights. Guys, gals, you've bought in games over the years. You've bought other things over the years. And two weeks later, it becomes a paperweight. And we were talking about this. We were talking about this two weeks ago. This 30 for 30 box set that I have, I was cleaning out inside. And for anyone that didn't see this before, you know, this is a 30 for 30. It's brand new. I have never, ever opened this or used any of the DVDs. You look at it, there's not even a fingerprint. They're brand new. Brand new. I was going to throw it out. Because it's just sitting inside. 
until I saw on Amazon $144 for this thing. But I bought it. Oh, yeah, I'll watch it next week. Next thing you know, it turned into a paperweight. Did I need to have that? Was it going to make a difference? Drew McIntyre got let go many years ago. He turned into a paperweight. He redeveloped, you know, reinvented himself, transformed his look. Jinder Mahal, as much as people don't like Jinder Mahal, he turned into a paperweight. WWE let him go. And you know, look, some people were let go. Are the fault of WWE. Creatively, they fucked up with Karrion Cross. Creatively, they fucked up with Keith Lee. Creatively, they fucked up with a lot of wrestlers. Unfortunately, when they own the company, you know, they actually, they're allowed to. We don't like it, but they own the company. You own a business and you fuck it up a little bit. You own the business, yeah, you, that's your right. That's your right. Darren, shout out to you, Darren. Thank you for hanging out. Darren, Darren in the chat was at all the watch parties this week. And I didn't even realize Tuesday he was rocking the DT shirt. So we had we had a lot of fun this week. A lot of fun this week. So don't forget with your question, just put capital T uh T. Capital Q or the word question. You know, I notice a lot of people do that so much easier because like I said, some of you are chatting amongst each other and it's hard for me to single out a question unless I see. So just do that. And it looks like, you know, we're doing a live chat instead of calls tonight, which is fine, which is fine. We can always do it, you know, in the future. In fact, some of you, the channel members said, open up the calls for channel members on Thursdays. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Michael Gonzalez, is it too soon for Dominic to turn on Ray at Mania? Well, take this for what it's worth. Dominic in a recent interview, said he will never let wrestle his father. I don't buy that. I would think, for the love of his father, he would absolutely lo would want to wrestle his father. Doesn't necessarily have to be a heel. But I think Dominic versus Ray will be a match in the future. Maybe if WWE goes to Mexico, or if they go to California, maybe. But I definitely see Ray versus Dominic in the future. May not be from a heel turn. Might be a one-off. But never say never. A lot of us thought that Dominic, and you know what? In hindsight, I'm kind of glad they didn't turn Dominic because he, he's not ready yet to be one of those heels. He turns heel. If he doesn't have a manager, he has to cut promos. And you hear some of his promos, even when he gets angry, what he with the Miz, you know, a lot of it kind of was a little cringe territory. He get better as the years go by. Well, look at my English. He get better. Yeah, in he in a years in years he get better. Most favorite poster on my wall. You know that's that's a good question. You know I don't see I don't want to start screwing up my camera. But I have to reposition everything because I got some light issues. And um, this chair, I, I this is the second chair I have already. Jay Carlos, you know, thank you. I still remember, you know, he was responsible in me getting another chair. But I noticed that sometimes I'll be doing it, maybe because of my weight, even though this chair is supposed to support 500 pounds. I'll be doing this show. And next thing you know, it'll be like this. Yeah, so raw results from this, is and then you the thing is just like going down. But um, I don't know if I don't. I like I said, I don't want to screw up the, the the video. But if you look, if you go up here, that's Eddie Guerrero up here. If you see, that's Eddie Guerrero. I love that one. That's Taz, half of the Taz Maniac and half of just regular Taz. That's AEW in Japan. That's Jesse Ventura, uh, Jesse Ventura, that's Jake the Snake Roberts and Macho Man. Little Daphne sign in the in the background. We got Piper. Yeah, I still have Becky up here. I'm probably, you know what, probably Piper. 
I know you really can't see it because of the lighting, but the Piper one is pretty cool. Maybe I can put the light on it. Yeah, there you go. That's probably my favorite one of them all. You got Tyson over here. Now let me fix this back. Let me fix this back. We can we can't screw this up. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Let me fix the lighting. All right, I guess that's all right for the rest of the show, right? Yeah. All right. Let me fix something here. Hey, probably the Piper one. If not Piper, probably Eddie. I have a bunch of a bunch of others. I just haven't put them on the wall yet. You know what happens now? I when I first put everything on the wall, I use command strips. Big mistake. I now have to use spray glue because eventually the command strips they start falling off and. I don't just have posters on the wall. I got the soundproof boards. I don't have any handy that I could show you, but this, like, you know, the cardboard soundproof, these things. I got these. I got these. They're light. They're nothing. But you put command strips, eventually they come down. And when they come down, all the pictures come down with it. So... I had a disaster last week. Mikey Hodge. Shout out to you, my brother. Much love, my friend. Hope you're doing well. I just got like soundproof board pubic hair in my mouth. Blech. All right. The uh, Beb, the Bebger, the Beb, the Bep Jr. Got it right. Do I see Becky Lynch? Going to SmackDown during the draft later this year to maybe go up against Rousey. Yeah, I could see that. Sure, I could see that. I think that actually is a great idea. Um, look, you know, a lot of people still haven't realized that going into WrestleMania next year, you some people really are not going to like this. You have a bunch of WWE talent that are going to be the focal point leading into 2023. You really think about it. Ronda, I would think, is still going to be around. Charlotte Flair ain't going anywhere. Becky ain't going anywhere. Bianca is being elevated even further. Sasha is Sasha. Bailey will be back. You got Rhea Ripley that they are taking their time with. You know, and there's others. Asuka is going to return. Now, sure, one or two of those women could very well be out of WWE by next year. But for the most part, they have the stranglehold. For the next 12 months, they have the stranglehold. On the men's side, you could see it. You could see, oh, and by the way, by the way, see, we had this feeling Friday during the watch party. We talked about it yesterday and ended up being true. When they introduced Pete Dunne with Sheamus and Ridge Holland. We said it right during the watch party, and we said it on Saturday. That was a telltale sign Xavier Woods was going to be back. And we all said we wouldn't be surprised if it's New Day versus Ridge Holland, Sheamus, and Pete Dunne at WrestleMania. Yesterday, Xavier Woods made his return. So just like we expected for the last week that, I think Xavier Woods is ready to return. I didn't have any knowledge. I don't want to say, oh, I had news. No. Adding Pete Dunne as a third member just felt like Xavier Woods must be. And remember, that's why Big E went to SmackDown. Big E went to SmackDown because of Xavier Woods' injury. You know, a lot of people felt that Big E was given an injustice. And, you know, look, what happened to him now is awful. But he did that also to help Kofi because WWE had no position for Kofi to be a singles star right now on SmackDown. I know that sounds terrible, but that's just the facts. So Xavier Woods is back. Now the problem is, and, and we said it yesterday. What did we say yesterday when we talked about Big E's injury? That if Xavier Woods comes back, Big E's injury may have saved Butch. As, unless they have Butch, Pete Dunne, go against Kofi. And I think they will. 
I think we will have on SmackDown next week, Pete Dunne versus Kofi. After that, your guess is as good as mine what they do with Pete Dunne. But now since they don't have a third person to feud against those three guys, I don't know what's going to happen with Ridge Holland. I mean, a lot of people are calling for his head, and that's a shame. I mean, you know, as I said yesterday, I'm wondering if Big E is going to come out with a video, tell everyone, look, don't be too hard on this guy. Accidents happen. Some wrestlers have come out and indirectly talked about it, and a lot of them said the same thing. Accidents happen. And that's as good as, you know, anything for Ridge Holland because, you know, they're pretty much saying, look, this was an accident, period. Now, if somebody, you know, very well respected in the world of wrestling writes accidents happen, but that ain't one of them, you know, then... If I'm Ridge Holland, I'd be a little bit concerned. So, all right. Yeah, I wonder if AEW is going to come out with trios belts before the end of 2022. Gary Richards, can I see Natalia Markova in WWE? Yeah, I could. Um, NXT, I would say, more than anything. You know, right now, I mean, even when people bring up Tessa Blanchard and others, even though she's not going there right now, um, you look at the women that have the stranglehold on Raw and SmackDown, you know, how do you break through that? The only way you break through it is through an injury or suspension or somebody's released or quits. You know, right now, you're not going to leapfrog. We've learned that with Liv Morgan and we've learned that with a few others. She's not bad. I saw a little of her work a couple of weeks ago. She uh, wrestled for House of Glory, which is a promotion here in New York, and she's their women's champion. So I watched a match she did a couple of weeks ago. She's pretty good. She's pretty good. She's still very early in her career. So she's got, she's only going to get better. Uh, I could see her in NXT. Absolutely. Main roster, only by default because there's too many. It's 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 a mat. Isn't that crazy when you really think about it? Like, should the women's division be that loaded? On that's why when people are like, oh, you know, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. Oh, this person keeps this. When you actually start dissecting it, it's like, wait, there's like twelve women that have the stranglehold. It's very easy to say, you know, why do they keep doing this or why do they keep doing that, but. I, Nobody comes up with a solution. It's very easy to criticize something, but no, take note of, the, of people who do not have a solution, do not offer a solution. And no, no, fire Bruce is not a solution. You know? Anyway. Would Big E change his finisher because of his neck? Don't know. Don't know. Got to wait and see the healing process. You know, if the bone heals to 100% with no complications, you know, I know this is going to sound kind of corny, but is 100% truly 100%? You know what I mean? Once you break something, it's almost like crazy glue. It's almost like crazy glue. See that light behind me? That light broke. That light broke. Look, I even have the glue still right here to prove it. That light broke. What happened was... The Eddie photo I showed you earlier, one night while I was sleeping, the command strips peeled off the thing. The panels, this thing, everything came down and it knocked the light onto the floor and the, the light cracked right in half. And I tried, you know, everything I possibly could. I even tried regular glue, nothing would work. I got this Gorilla Super Glue and even when I held it together for like a minute, it wasn't perfect. It was it, like it still like wobbles a little bit, but it's strong enough. Now, after reinforcing it, it's strong. But is it truly a hundred percent? Once something breaks, even if it heals perfectly, that doesn't necessarily look. My hip, I broke and dislocated my hip in 1996. 
I shattered both sides of my ankle. I broke my leg. I broke bones in my foot. I fell down a flight of stairs two months ago. You all remember it. And I still have pain in my toe. I had x-rays done, and they said there's no break. Why does it freaking hurt still whenever I walk, every time I put weight on it? And, oh, it could be arthritis. Well, I didn't fucking have the arthritis before I fell down a flight of stairs. There's no break. My point is, once something breaks, it truly never is 100%. But the, the human body is still miraculous, though. If he heals and there's no complicate, he should be good to go. He should be good to go. I'm sure that they will definitely monitor him with MRIs and x-rays periodically to make sure that there's no issues. But uh, let's just hope to God he doesn't require a surgery, especially when you go that high up. So, Rockstar Wolfie, when I fell off the ladder, I didn't break any bones. I tore my shoulder up and my bicep. And I went a year and a half before getting surgery on that. And if anybody, the video's on the channel. Just in my channel, just type the word ladder and you'll see the video. I fell, I was installing security cameras in my office. And go figure, the, the first day, I install the camera. I'm in my ceiling. I lost my balance. And I grabbed onto an old tube TV where I taught defensive driver classes since the 90s. Those giant tube TVs. I started falling backwards. I grabbed the TV. Guess what? The TV came along for the ride. And I, I'm not joking. I came this close probably of maybe even killing myself because this TV was like, what, 100 pounds? You That big sound when I fall, that's the TV making the sound. That's not me. I, You know, I may have the video. I may have the video. I don't, you see, I don't have anything titled properly. So I don't think, yeah, I, it's, it's, it'd be a shocker if I find this. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's happening tonight. You could just do, just do a search. Well, I'll, I'll look one more area. I'm just looking for ladders. I don't see it. Nope. So, yeah, you can just check the channel. You can find it there. Michael Gonzalez, my favorite Brock Lesnar rivalry? Probably Cena. I mean, I loved when Eddie took him on. But Cena, though, especially that was SummerSlam, when he just destroyed Cena. I don't know, I, something I loved about Brock, you know, sending Cena to Suplex City over and over and over again. But I will say this, his feud with Roman Reigns is pretty awesome too because this is my favorite version of Brock. So in the end, I might actually choose Roman. And you know, you know what Brock goes in the WWE Hall of Fame and I know what you're going to say, oh, he doesn't give a shit about Hall of Fame. So he'll go in. They offer him money and say, he'll go in. I think, looking back, they may say that Robin Reigns is his greatest feud. Look at Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy just said in a video a day or two ago that his favorite feud of all time was Umaga. That's pretty fucking cool. You know, I'm talking about one-on-one. -on -one. Umaga. I don't know why my screen keeps flickering. I'm getting a little nervous here. We're almost done anyway, so we've, we're at an hour and 10. This is right around the time that I gun for with the shows. Obviously, we opened up for about 15 minutes talking about Scott Hall, so maybe we could stick around for another five minutes or so. And don't forget, don't forget, tomorrow at 11.05, Mish and I will be here for Breakfast Soup Raw. We'll talk about Raw, obviously. We're also going to talk about that list that came out. And when I say it, 95% of you out there uh, have no idea that this list came out. But, I, you know, I don't care if you look it up. I mean, some people will not announce what they're going to talk about until the show. But you can look it up now if you want, after the show's over. They came out with a list, top 10 list, of female athletes who are trolled. The top 10 most trolled female athletes in 2021. Ronda Rousey was number one. 
Becky Lynch was number two. Now, yes, Becky, what happened with her at SummerSlam with Bianca pissed off a lot of people, but she came back. She had a kid. You know, I mean, there's a lot. Lo Becky is also shows a lot of love and support for people online. She was the number two most trolled woman in sports in 2021. It's it's nuts. I never in a million years ever thought Charlotte's not. I don't even think Charlotte's in the top ten. How crazy is that? So we're gonna get into that list. Yes, yeah, Serena Williams is on that list. In fact, you know what I'll do? Because I I definitely. Oh, by the way, before I pull up the list, I'll read you the top ten. But tomorrow, mission, I got to talk about a little more detail. Charlotte Flair hit a milestone today. She combined reign as women's champion. She is now. At 822 days, she has surpassed Trish Stratus' combined reign. And the funny thing about it is she only needs to have the title now for another seven and a half years to come close to Fabulous Moolah. So, but hey, you passed Trish Stratus. You must be doing something good, right? Anyway, all right, top 10 female Trolled. Let's see. Okay, I think I found it. Yep, here we go. I found it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, this is celebrities. Paige Spurnak. Oh, she ranked in the top 10. Okay, no, no, no. All right, I got it. I got the list. Right. Hey, wait a minute. So, okay. See, I hate when people throw shit out of order. Yeah, I'll put the. I'll put it on the screen. I'll put it on the screen. But like I said, Mish and I are going to talk about it a little more in detail tomorrow. But, yeah. My apologies, though, for the moron that put this on the screen and didn't put it in the exact top 10 order. This is, for 2021, the top 10 most trolled professional female athletes. Number one on the list, 83.1% of the tweets towards Ronda Rousey were negative. Number two, with 76.2%, is Becky Lynch. And then it goes down the list. In no particular order, Simone Biles, Shikari Richardson, Naomi Osaka, Becky Lynch, Ronda Rousey, Megan uh, Rapinoe? Rapinoe? I always, may, I always get her name wrong. Clarissa Shields, Emma uh, Rad Raducano? I don't, know. I don't know. I said it's so perfect. Was it yesterday or Friday? No, it was Friday during the watch along. Paige Spurniak. Spir Spir God, I could say Japanese wrestlers' names better now, and I can't ace those. Serena Williams on that list. Rapino. Yes, Rapino. Megan Rapino. Clarissa Shields. Emma Raducanu. I know I definitely said that wrong. All right, well, anyway, that's your top 10. Becky Lynch, number two. Number two. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, you know, if you look at the number of tweets, though, I mean, let's be honest. Let me tell you what I don't like about this list. Look at Serena Williams on the bottom. Serena Williams, 75.5% of her tweets are negative. But Serena Williams had a total of 2,555 tweets. Ronda Rousey only doubled that with 5,035. Simone Biles had 14,077 tweets. If you go in numerical order, Simone Biles is number one with 9,000 negative tweets. But they usually go by percentage because... Who's the most trolled? Yeah, you can. You might have the most, you know, trolled. But let let's point this out, which people don't think about. Simone Biles, ninety one hundred out of a fourteen thousand tweets were negative, but that also means almost five thousand tweets were positive. Almost five thousand of her tweets were positive. You go to Ronda Rousey, only eight hundred of her tweets were positive. All right. Who's more beloved, Simone Biles, who had almost 5,000 positive tweets, or Ronda Rousey, who only had 800? That's why you go with percentage. 
So, I don't know. That's the list. Yeah, I don't know why Becky Lynch is on that list. I mean, you know, man, it's probably the match with Bianca at SummerSlam. You take away that match, there's no way Becky is on that list. Not even close. And with Becky, she had 8,700 tweets. 6,600 of them were negative. So, yeah, that's that's a little nuts. So anyway, let's start bringing this home, everyone. Don't forget, tomorrow I'll be here with Mish. Tuesday will be the NXT Watch Along. You're all invited. Just reach out to me. If you're a channel member, you already have the link. If you're a Patreon, you already have the link. Um, if you don't and need a link, like I said, DM me on Twitter at Don Tony D or email me Don Tony at Don Tony dot com. Please do not put in the YouTube comment section, you know, send me an invite. How? I can't there is no direct message on YouTube. Just Send me a DM on Twitter or email me, and I'll be more than happy to send you an invite. So, um, can I do the thank you again? Oh, I got to do this. This is for Rams fan. Even though Rams fan did not ask me to elaborate or to clear this up, I needed, I felt the need to do this. Yesterday, we were talking about Ridge Holland getting a lot of heat for what happened to Big E. And we were talking about things, and Rams fan actually said this. To those who harass Ridge Holland on social media, would you have done it to Owen Hart, too, in 1997? Villain, much love, my friend. He, on behalf of everyone, is sending thoughts and prayers for Scott Hall. Yeah, pray for a miracle, man. Like I said, you don't have to be religious to pray. You know, just say, you know, just keep a thought to yourself like, man, I I hope for a miracle. Every minute that goes by that you're on life support, it gets less and less less of a chance. I mean, it just really, you know, you have a, a machine keeping you alive, keeping you, you know, I don't even want to think about it, to be honest with you. But, Rams fan posted that comment yesterday. After the show was over, I thought about it, and I was assuming afterwards that, oh, he must be talking about Steve Austin's injury. But there was no mention of Steve Austin in his comment. So I just talked thought of the accident that happened with Owen Hart because we were talking about accidents. You know, that, that was the conversation yesterday. Like Ridge Holland with Big E, it was an accident. And when he brought up this comment, I immediately went with Owen Hart when he passed. That that was a tragic accident, and no one on social media at that time was getting vilified for it because we didn't know what caused it. You know, there was some, you know, criticism because Owen Hart was afraid of heights, but we really didn't know. And then afterwards, a few people brought to my attention said, I think he was talking about the pile driver to Steve Austin. So, again, I don't know if that's the case, but if if he was talking about Owen Hart getting vilified for the pile driver to Steve Austin, I will say this, and I know a lot of you older people like me out there will say this also. In 1997, Owen Hart on Prodigy Chats, Instant Message, Message Boards, Mice, I don't know if MySpace was around at that time, but I do not recall... Anybody, anybody, I'm sure there's always somebody, but I don't recall any noise that people were blaming this on Owen Hart. I don't recall people like, wow, that's careless, Owen Hart, he fucking caused it, this and that. I don't even recall anybody. I was doing my hotline at the time, and I don't recall ever blaming Owen Hart. I don't remember anybody, you know, any popular thought that it was Owen Hart's fault, dude. It was an accident. Shit happens. Um, So, no. If that's where he was going with this, no. Owen Hart did not get vilified with what happened with Steve Austin. And um, he shouldn't have. And he didn't. So, 
Charlie's asking, how do we find the brand of John Cena's knee pads? Wow, I don't know, man. I mean, do maybe Google search? Maybe you get lucky and you get a response from Cena. I mean, good luck. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we don't know where he shops. Maybe he has a deal with some sports athletic company out there. You know, I mean, you think of Tiger Woods, you think, oh, Nike. You think of Jordan back in there, oh, Nike. You know, you think of some others, oh, Puma? I don't remember anybody having a Puma deal. Uh, yeah, there's really, there's really no way of knowing. Plus, I don't even know if John Cena has a preference of a company for knee pads. I would tend to think that most wrestlers would use similar companies. I mean, knee pads are usually cut and dry. Now, if you're going to say, like, knee braces, like with Steve Austin, I'm sure he got it done from a medical company. You know, I don't think he would go to sports authority and say, give me a knee pad. Let's see, I sound Jewish when I try to beat Steve Austin. I got I can't I can't think about it in advance. Then I could do it. High guess. You know, what do you want me to say? You know, it's it's awful and it sucks. And you know, all I could say is what I've been saying for two years. You know, I did not vote for Trump. Second time around, I did not vote for him. But all I know is gas was two dollars a gallon. And a lot of other shit was about 40% cheaper two years ago. I mean, well before Russia invaded Ukraine, which that in itself is horrible. Um, like I said, wrestling shirts were now $40. Amazon raises their prime memberships. Stakes go up to $40. I know there's a supply and demand issue, but there's a lot of messed up shit going on in the world right now. And there's no update on Tammy. None. Would I sell my insurance business? No. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I mean, I love doing this. People keep telling me, DT, do this full-time. Make it your business. Dedicate all your time. I can't. I can't. Because, God forbid, you know, if, if the businesses, look, it took me how long to ink a deal like I did with Blue Wire? I could have gone to YouTube 10 years ago, I could have gone to Sirius Satellite. I could have been on FM radio. I could have done a lot of things, did not do it. But it's not guaranteed. I mean, you know, I bring up Patreon, for example. You know, when we started Patreon, what, five years ago? There was only three or four wrestling channels that have patrons. Now there's thousands. And, you know, with this economy, a lot of people have to choose who they're going to go where. And honestly, you know, some of the content on the channel is not, doesn't have the value it used to. So the Patreon is about this big of what it used to be, you know? And um, again, I don't know how long that channel is going to stick around because as I've always said, and it's just the honest, just being honest, you know, if, if I turn around to my, to, you know, the other hosts that do uh, shows on there too and say, Hey, the money's dried up. You know, will you do it for free? I don't think anybody's going to do it. You know what I mean? So, this, listen, right now there's no jeopardy of Patreon shutting down. What my point is, is that it's it's not a lifelong thing. There's no guarantee. You do and you enjoy while things last. Remember the YouTube bubble several years ago? A lot of you remember TV tracks. I am convinced I am convinced to this day that that is why TV Tracks left. That the amount of money that he was making for the amount of work that he was doing, because he was putting in the work, once that bubble burst on YouTube and they were getting pennies on the dollar of what they used to get, who the hell is going to put that kind of work in there to make nothing? You know, a lot of people don't understand this. And that's why I say, you're like, I always get people that'll say to me, oh, look at your YouTube channel. Look how many views you get compared to this show out there. You know, number one, 85 to 90% of everybody that tune into my shows access the audio only side of things. And YouTube is not about making money over here. Super Chats obviously are huge. Memberships are huge. Buying merch is huge. But anybody that's a YouTuber, 
will tell you. Lee is probably still hanging out right now. If he's here, he'll tell you that it, the commercials that air during these, and I usually only have two breaks, if that, we'd be lucky if we get paid five bucks for a show. In a week, it might be $35 for a show, for the shows combined. Who the hell is going to do five shows on YouTube a week, not including everything else, and for advertising revenue, five bucks times six or whatever it is? You know, so it's not what everybody thinks it is. And that's what happens to a lot of podcasters. I always say, if you're going to start, do it because you love it. Don't do it because you think you're going to rake in the bucks quick. You know, because a lot of them, they go on YouTube, they do it. And that's why so many clickbait. That's why so many clickbait. Because even with 15, 20,000 views that some people do with the Cody clickbaits and everything else, you add the the advertising revenue, especially if the show's pre-recorded, and there's no super chats coming in, they might get $12 in revenue, $15 in revenue. That's all it is. Unless, unless... And I, and I love Conrad. But uh, unless you do, you like Conrad and there's a commercial that airs every two minutes, you know, or you have affiliate marketing, you know. I mean, everybody's selling razors. Everybody's selling soap for your balls. Everybody's selling cereal. Everybody's selling meat. Everybody's selling hello fresh, goodbye fresh, Dougie fresh. You know, I haven't gone into the affiliate marketing, you know. I may down the line. But there's a nice balance right now. Honestly, everything is cool in the gang. You know, I'm having fun and, you know, condensing these shows a little bit. See, even now we're rambling a little bit. We're not even 90 minutes yet. I'm going to finish now. But we're not even 90 minutes yet. So my point is you get everything done quick. You could hang around and socialize a little bit. And the shows are not, you know, three-hour broadways especially when you do six, seven shows a week. So I got news for you. Germ, no joke, Magic Spoon is pretty kick-ass. Uh, go to Solomon's this channel because he does have a coupon code, and that shit is legit. I bought Magic Spoon. You know, I haven't, you know, set up any affiliate marketing. I'm not looking to right now, but that is one that I can honestly say is pretty good shit. They're pretty good. My, Kai Ortiz, JD does it. That's his full-time work. And the man puts in crazy-ass hours. And it looks like he's having fun. I just, I can't give up my insurance business because if this dries up or if something happens to me, something happens, whatever, you know, whatever, I lose my shows or I just stopped or wrestling just sucks. You know, I, I have my insurance business to fall back on. So I try to keep a balance. Just uh, sometimes it gets a little difficult, but it's all good. Uh, I stopped uploading old shows for the simple reason that there's really no interest in it. There's still about three years worth of content on Patreon, but here, you know, like I had few people, oh, you got to put them up, you put it, and it's not easy because I had to, I have to edit every episode, try to improve the audio quality for some people, and you spend two, three hours trying to boost up a show, you put it online, and almost nobody downloads it, so it's just not, you know, like, I do like specific requests here and there, but down the line, you know, I'm sure I'll probably just throw a year up. And the reason why I put it on Patreon is because everybody else does. You know, everybody else puts all their episodes on a paywall. You know, I'm not going to do that kind of work just to have 30 people download it. So, yeah, I would not be interested in selling things on QVC. I don't have time. I don't have time. Abraham says I've seen him on QB, QVC. You know, Pen, uh, Lucha Brothers ma a manager, Alex Abrahantes, is not bad. Guy's a good guy. He really is. Um, at first, I thought he was a little goofy until I started talking to people who know him. And, uh, you know, you 
learn a little bit about the person other than just what you see on TV. And he actually is a good guy. Alex Abedahantes is good people. So, all right, everybody, I'm going to jet out of here. I thank you all. And yes, Gruss, Umaga, if there was any year that he should go in the Hall of Fame, it should have been this year. If not, I think next year. I think, I think Umaga is a lock for either this year or next year. There's going to be more names added. You're not just going to have Vader and Undertaker. Um, do you put two people in who are past? Sure, why not? I think Umaga goes in either this year or next year. So, good night, everybody. On the way out, if you enjoyed the show, hit that like button. It helps. You'd be surprised. Um, join us tomorrow night, 11.05 p.m. with Mish. Thank you, as always, for your support. Have a great Sunday night. Let's hope tomorrow night, you know, there's an old saying, no news is good news. I use that in insurance a lot. Hey, do you know if my claim got declined? Well, I haven't heard anything, but you know what? No news is good news. With Scott Hall, sometimes in this case, maybe no news is good news. So let's hope for a miracle. So night, everybody. Much love. And yes, Sam, we will have another uh, Forbidden Door podcast version in the very near future. So I am narrowing down the next election. And then I have to invite the person, see if they accept. I have a few names in mind. So it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. Much love, everybody. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a podcaster. Oh, that sucks. What? just happened as far back as i can remember i always wanted to be a podcaster for me to live any other way was nuts to me those goody good people who work shitty jobs for bum paychecks and took the subway to work every day and worried about their bills were dead i mean they were suckers they had no balls if i wanted something i just took it i ran everything i paid the bills I paid the host, I even paid the masked maniac. Everybody had their hands out. Everything was for the taking. We always called each other good fellas. You would always hear from somebody. You're gonna like Don Tony. He's all right, he's a good fella. He's one of us. But if you're part of my crew, nobody ever tells you they're gonna get rid of you. It doesn't happen that way. There weren't any arguments or curses like in the movies. See, your haters come with smiles. They come as your friends, the people who've claimed they care the most for your life. And now, now that's all over. And that's the best part. Today everything is different. There's lots of action. I don't have to wait around for everything like everyone else. Oh, I didn't get the vaccine? Fuck you, vaccine me. Oh, your delivery guy has COVID? Fuck you, feed me. Right after I moved here, I ordered egg noodles and ketchup, and I got spaghetti with meat sauce. I'm no longer an average nobody, while they get to live the rest of their lives like a bunch of schnooks. <laughs>